All right, well, the um, Rights of Passage program is a two-year grant funded from the Heinz Endowments in an effort for us to reach out to the community, the Wilkinsburg community in particular. Um, we, we collaborated with the Wilkinsburg Athletic Association, primarily or primarily their football team in an effort to build some unity and cohesion amongst the um, participants and also the, also branch out resources to branch out our resources to the Wilkinsburg Athletic Association. We have a cultural phase, an education phase, and a community phase. Um, the cultural phase, we were talking about African customs and traditions. That was in October to about, I wanna say, January. And then in January, we started the education phase, which I'm primarily responsible for the education phase. We wanted to talk about the history of African Americans in the United States of America as it relates to education and as it, as it relates to also rights. So one thing, the part that we started with, with education was in 1898 with the Plessy versus Ferguson decision of separate but equal. Then we moved all the way up to Brown versus the board in 1954. And then we talked about after Brown versus the board with the continued segregation of some of the schools and some in segregation as it relates to today. One of the reasons why we have the education portion is because what we teach in educate, what we're teaching here in education is not primarily taught in schools. Most of what um, young African American boys, or young African Americans, or people in general learn about is you hear about Martin Luther King. Sometimes you may hear Harriet Tubman, but that's about it. Um, we want to teach them more. There's more than just Martin Luther King in our history books, and there's more than just the Civil Rights Movement. There were a lot of things that happened before the Civil Rights Movement, so we do that. Like how you have unsung. We talk about the unsung people in the civil rights movement, and unsung African Americans. So, and that's something that they don't get in school, and unfortunately, it's not coming in. I don't see it happening in the curriculum of any public school system anytime soon. So, the affirmation circle is basically um, a, tr a tradition or a custom of just bringing everybody together. We kind of like to simulate it to the, the same as the football team. You have a football team before the game; they get real hype, they jump around in the circle, they chant things of that nature. So, we wanted to do somewhat. Uh, something to, to that similar of nature to where we come together before we go into our activities we talk about how we feel today what we're here for and we make sure that we're here for a common goal so that's what the affirmation circle is about with the rights of passage tour we um, traveled through 13 states in about five days we started in Memphis Tennessee where we went to the Lorraine Motel on April 4th um, the significance of that day is because on April 4th Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated at the Lorraine Motel so we actually went to visit the Lorraine Motel um, Jesse Jackson gave a speech at the Lorraine Motel and he also did a, um, a reef posting um, also we looked at the National Civil Rights Museum in Memphis, Tennessee, and we had to take in some sights and sounds. The kids, that not only did they enjoy the Lorraine Motel, but they actually got to see where the NBA team, the Memphis Grizzlies, get to play at the FedEx Forum. So going through downtown Memphis, we also got to stay in a very nice hotel, the Spring Hill Suites, which is a Marriott, and most of the kids coming from our community never been anywhere and never actually got to stay in a nice hotel. So instead of us putting you up in a Motel 6 or a Super 8, why don't we try Marriott? So, you know, we, they actually enjoyed that. They enjoyed the free breakfast every morning. Um, some of the other things that we did in Memphis were, since we were right on the Mississippi River, we actually got to look at Arkansas. So you can kind of count 14 states if you, wanna, if you want to, but we went to the Mississippi River. We took pictures at the, in front of the Mississippi River and we actually got to look across the bridge and see Arkansas. Um, the next day, we packed our bags and went to Jackson, Mississippi. At Jackson, Mississippi, um, they got to see a black school, Jackson State University. They actually got to see members of um, Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated, which is a um, black, historically black fraternity on the campus. They actually met with the kids and gave them a small tour and told them what college life is like, trying to get them exposed. Even though they're between the ages of nine and 14, that exposure should start young, so we decided to do that. Um, we also went to Megar Evers' home, and it was a very pleasant and humble surprise that Mrs. Evers actually came by. If you may or may not know, Mrs. Evers now lives in California, so she came all the way from California for something totally different from what we were there for and she just so happened to stop by the house while we were touring the house. So Mrs. Evers actually came in and said hi to everybody and gave everybody a hug. We took a picture with Mrs. Evers. The next day we left for Montgomery, Alabama. But before we went to Montgomery, Alabama, we stopped in Selma. Selma, um, you may or may not know, the fa famous Pettus Bridge where the march from Selma to Montgomery took place to, for voters' rights. So we actually stopped at the Pettus Bridge and we had the kids actually walk across that bridge. Now we weren't going to have them walk 50 miles of Montgomery, but 
um, at the end of that bridge, there was the Voters' Rights Museum, and they actually got a tour that for free. And that was actually another pleasant surprise because we didn't know that that Voters' Rights Museum was at the other side of the bridge. So, you know, the guy opened up, and we the tour bus came, there and they said, you know, we're closed. We're only for appointments only. He said, oh, we didn't know you guys were here. We're just bringing a bunch of kids over the bridge about the for the um, Selma to Montgomery march. We said, well, you know what? I'll open up the place for you guys and let you guys see what's in here. So we actually got a free tour for in Selma, and then we got back on a bus and went to Montgomery. And Montgomery actually went to the, the Rosa Parks National Museum. Um, at this museum, and basically talked about the uh, Montgomery bus boycotts that went on in, in Montgomery, um, case by case scenarios. We actually got to see Montgomery being the capital of Alabama. We got to see the Capitol building. We also got to see a couple things about Confederate history. Um, the interesting thing about Montgomery, Alabama, they say that was the place where the Civil Rights Movement started and the Civil War. And they actually have a picture, so we have pictures. I can actually show you the picture of where the spot, same spot where Rosa Parks got on the bus, got on the bus. The building right across the street was the first orders to start the fire, the first firing orders for the Civil War. So that's what they kind of take pride in that the Civil War and the Civil Rights Movement started at this one location. So pretty inter pretty interesting history. But we also got to see the um, Dexter Avenue Baptist Church where Martin Luther King preached for three years, and very. A lot of lot of history coming at, at us and coming at the kids at the same time. Like I said, we went 13, 14 different states in about four days. Um, the next day, we went to Atlanta, Georgia, where we went to the Martin Luther King National Historic Site, where we actually got to see the tombs where Martin Luther King and Coretta Scott King were buried. Um, we also seen the Ebenezer Baptist Church. And for me, I actually thought that that church was still, they were still preaching in the church. And I found out that, no, they turned into a museum and the new churches across the street. So it was interesting seeing where Dr. Martin Luther King actually preached and his father preached also. And for the first time ever, I seen what his parents looked like. Unfortunately, it was a picture at Martin Luther King Jr.'s funeral, but that was my first time actually seeing what his parents actually looked like. Cause you know, everybody has a mother and father and it's, you always hear about Martin Luther King Jr., but who are his parents? So we actually got to see a picture of what they look like. So very cultural, very enlightening and it's great to put a picture and a face to some of the things you read in the history books or some of the things you don't see in the history books. Mm -hmm. It happened very, very fast for them, mm -hmm. but it was kind of like a, oh my goodness, like kids didn't even know who Jesse Jackson was when we came down to uh, Memphis, Tennessee, but it was like they knew that he was somebody. Like some people was like, I've seen him on TV before. It was like, well, that that's him right there. So it was kind of like a, oh, Martin Luther King was shot. He was assassinated there, so we always hear about Martin Luther King. They really don't talk about Lorraine Motel too much, or you might see the one picture of everybody pointing up in the sky, but it's like, now you're actually here, and you're actually seeing it, so it was like that. Oh my goodness, so their reaction to it was fairly was fairly well, and even, even the hotels that we stayed at, they enjoyed staying there too. They enjoyed all the ex extracurriculars that went on with, you know, staying at the hotel and just the other sites and, and sounds that we see. And also the camaraderie amongst the young men, you know, we took a bus tour, so we had to share a bus for five days. That was our home. Mm -hmm. And just the camaraderie that you seen there was just very good and positive. Basically to get involved is just the volunteer. I mean, we have more than just a rites of passage program. We have an after school program that runs through Tuesday through Thursday. Um, we have spelling bees, Kwanzaa celebration, so it's not just about just this rites of passage program because one thing about rites of passage it goes on throughout the rest of your life. This is just one small piece of what they're doing. But as far as getting involved, these most of these kids are actually involved in our after school program. Some of them signed up for our annual spelling bee, which is coming up in a couple weeks. Um, some of them were involved with the Kwanzaa celebration and the African American team competition. So. These kids are involved with everything, so if you want to get involved, it's just a matter of coming to Addison. If you're a youth, we have something for you. If you're an adult and you want to volunteer and work with, work with our youth, we have something for you.